Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on creating a custom two-string method for, for an object in JavaScript. Uh, this is a follow-on to a demo I did of um, sort of exploring this problem and the solution in the browser console. But now I'm doing it inside my Cloud9 workspace, so I end up with um, code I can keep and reuse. Uh, just to just to review what the problem is here, um, I have a few lines of code. I'm creating uh, a little object. Um, this is related to our point objects we're going to use eventually to place things on the um, canvas. But right now you can think of it just as um, an object that has an X and a Y property. And each of those have a value. And we're going to console log that two different ways. So I'm going to run this code and um, bring this window where the output is going to be shown up here and split my pane in two columns. So I can see the output on the right and the code on the left. And as you can see, um, if I just log the object, the console logger knows enough to show me all of the properties. But if I try to put a label on that object, um, what I get is the object is converted to a string before it's concatenated. And that's done with um, a default to string method, which is what we want to, um, we want to um, override here. There is one other solution to this problem. Um, if I simply console log my label, and then with a comma, I console log P1, and I run that. Okay, I get a fairly decent um, output here where I have the label and then I have this, um, but I don't really get control over exactly how this is going to look. And what we want to do with our custom to string method is, is control that and be able to apply it to each of our points. So, um, I have, if I'm lucky, a method so you don't have to watch me type. Um, and this is what I showed in the browser before, is that every object has a two-string method already. And we can override that since it's just a property. We can reset its, its value with a new function that looks like this. And now if we take these same well, this same line, which is the, is the problem line, and we bring it down here after we've added a method to P1, a, a custom method to P1 for two string, and we run that, what we'll get is the output we wanted. So here we have point x equals 50, y equals 100. If we want to have that say location x, location y, and we run that, we can essentially control the output to say whatever it is we want, it, we want to have said when we console log this particular location on, on the screen. And, um, and being able to see exactly what the code is doing with console logging is a great thing. So we want to be able to do that. Now, the problem with adding this method this way is that if I create a second um, second point um, and give it two new values. And I tried to do the same thing with it. Um, I'm not going to get what I really want, which is the same formatted output for the two of them. So P1 has the overriding two string method, but P2 does not. We're still getting the default output. So what we'd like to do is be able to have the same two string overriding function um, available for both of these points. And I'm going to do that kind of in, in two steps. Um, the first thing I can do, 
and I'm going to now I'm going to move this up to the top because we like our functions at the top. Um, I'm going to put this up here, and instead of de declaring this as a property of, of any particular point right away, I'm going to change this back to a regular function that I'm going to call point to string. Um, the name of this at this point doesn't matter at all. Um, it, I could call it Fred, I could call it F1, um, I can call it point to string. Um, when I am initially de defining point to string, I can give it any name I want. But what happens is that now when I want to override the two string method here, I can just name point to string. And you'll notice I'm not calling point to string, and I'm not calling I'm not calling point I'm not calling the two string method over here. I'm not calling point to string over here. I'm saying that the function point to string should be assigned to the method to string. And at that point, I not only can um, assign it like that, but one of the other things I can do here is in an object literal, I can even Again, the IDE keeps wanting me to call that function, but I don't want to call the function. So um, I'm going to neaten my code up here a little bit. Okay. And if I have a function called point to string declared, okay, I can add it by assigning it to to string after p1 has been um, has been created or in the course of p2 i can simply assign my function to the two string uh, property and in this case um, i should get the same nicely labeled output for both p1 and p2 and i do so that's um, that's useful enough, but even that is a little bit tedious, um, having to remember to do this and having to remember to type it. If you'll notice, um, basically every time we create a point, we're going to want to be adding exactly the same um, uh, assignment to the two-string method. So the other thing I can do, which um, is partway towards having a constructor, is I can create a function called, let's just call it make point. And um, let's say that when we make a point, we're going to pass in a location X and a location Y. And then what we're gonna do is want to get um, a point back from that function. So what I do in here is uh, never steal never write code that you can steal. Basically inside here, I want to have a generic point, but I think this time I will type it in. I want to create a point in here. Um, I could call it point, I could call it P, PX, um, some point. And I want to set that to an object literal notation that looks just like this actually. Okay, so I will grab this part. Except that instead of those values, I want to create a point that's at location X, location Y. Okay. And when I call this function, I want to get PX back from it. So we want to return PX. And again, I'm going to neaten up my code a little bit. And now what happens is, um, and once again, we like our functions at the top, so we're going to go ahead and move this up here now that I've typed it. Move it out of here. Move it up to here. And now what I can do is, instead of an object literal for P1, I can ask P1, I can ask make point to give me back. Um, what were those values? I have no idea. Um, I guess I do know. 
x was 50, y was 100. So I have that backwards. So let's go ahead and make P1 exactly the same as it was before, except that we have a lot less code to do that with. We no longer need to be adding this later. We don't need two versions of that because we're, we're, not, we're not adding that function at a different point. And now P2, we just ask make point to give us a P2 that's at, what was that, 55, 77? And if we run this code, we've refactored it. We've changed how the code works internally without necessarily um, changing the, um, without changing his behavior. We have in fact changed his behavior um, in one way, and that is that when we to string it, um, we get with this notation, we get that there is a function property in it. And that's another good reason for controlling your own um, to string output, is that, that then the function names are omitted, because really, when we care about a point, we care about its location X and its location Y. So, again, we have a function that will print out what we want to see when we console log a point. We have a function which can take two values and create a point that's at location X, at location Y, and overrides the default to string method with the to string method we like and returns that point. And now whenever we need a point, we can just specify the locations and we know that we're going to be able to print it exactly the way we want. I hope that that makes sense to you. Um, we're going to be doing this same thing for circles and rectangles.